My father bought the bear. None of us was born. We weren't even conceived. Not Frank, the oldest. Not Franny, the loudest. Not me, the next. And not the youngest of us, Lillian Egg. My father and mother were hometown kids who knew each other all their lives, but their union, as Frank always called it, hadn't taken place when father bought the bear. Their union, Frank? Franny used to tease him. Although Frank was the oldest, he seemed younger than Franny to me, and Franny always treated him as if he were a baby. What you mean, Frank, Franny said, is that they hadn't started screwing. They hadn't consummated their relationship, said Lily one time. Although she was younger than any of us, except Egg, Lily behaved as if she were everyone's older sister, a habit Franny found irritating. Consummated? Franny said. I don't remember how old Franny was at the time, but Egg was not old enough to hear talk like this. Mother and father simply didn't discover sex until after the old man got that bear, Franny said. That bear gave them the idea. He was such a gross, horny animal, humping trees and playing with himself and trying to rape dogs. He mauled an occasional dog, Frank said with disgust. He didn't rape dogs. He tried to, Franny said. You know the story. Father's story. Lily would then say, with a disgust slightly different from Frank's disgust. It was Franny Frank was disgusted with, but Lily was disgusted with father. And so it's up to me, the middle child and the least opinionated, to set the record straight, or nearly straight. We were a family whose favorite story was the story of my mother and father's romance, how father bought the bear how mother and father fell in love and had, in rapid succession, Frank, Franny, and me, bang, 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 as Franny would say, and after a brief rest, how they then had Lily and Egg. Pop and fizzle, Franny says. The story we were told as children and retold to each other when we were growing up tends to focus on those years we couldn't have known about and can see now only through our parents' many versions of the tale. I tend to see my parents in those years more clearly than I see them in the years I actually can remember, because those times I was present, of course, are colored by the fact that they were up-and-down times, about which I have up-and-down opinions. Toward the famous summer of the bear and the magic of my mother and father's courtship, I can allow myself a more consistent point of view. When father would stumble in telling us the story, when he would contradict an earlier version or leave out our favorite parts of the tale, we would shriek at him like violent birds. Either you're lying now or you lied the last time, Franny, always the harshest of us, would tell him. But father would shake his head innocently. Don't you understand? He would ask us. You imagine the story better than I remember it. Go get mother, Franny would order me, shoving me off the couch, or else Frank would lift Lily off his lap and whisper to her, Go get mother. And our mother would be summoned as witness to the story we suspected father of fabricating. Or else you're leaving out the juicy parts on purpose, Franny would accuse him, just because you think Lily and Egg are too young to hear about all the screwing around. There was no screwing around, mother would say. There was not the promiscuity and freedom there is today. If a girl went off and spent the night or weekend with someone, even her peers thought her a tramp or worse. We really didn't pay much attention to a girl after that. Her kind sticks together, we used to say, and water seeks its own level. And Franny, whether she was eight or ten or fifteen or twenty-five, would always roll her eyes and elbow me. Or tickle me, and whenever I tickled her back, she'd holler, Pervert! Feeling up his own sister! And whether he was nine, or eleven, or twenty-one, or forty-one, Frank always hated sexual conversations and demonstrations of Franny's kind. He would say quickly to father, Never mind that. What about the motorcycle? No, 
Go on about the sex, Lily would tell Mother, very humorlessly, and Franny would stick her tongue in my ear or make a farting noise against my neck. Well, Mother said, we did not talk freely of sex in mixed company. There was necking and petting, light or heavy. It was usually carried on in cars. There were always secluded areas to park. Lots more dirt roads, of course, fewer people and fewer cars. And cars weren't compact then. So you could stretch out, Franny said. Mother would frown at Franny and persevere with her version of the times. She was a truthful but boring storyteller, no match for my father. And whenever we called on Mother to verify a version of a story, we regretted it. Better to let the old man go on and on, Franny would say. Mother's so serious, Frank would frown. Oh, go play with yourself, Frank. You'll feel better, Franny would tell him. But Frank would only frown harder. Then he'd say, if you'd begin by asking father about the motorcycle or something concrete, you'd get a better answer than when you bring up such general things, the clothes, the customs, the sexual habits. Frank, tell us what sex is, Franny would say. But father would rescue us all by saying in his dreamy voice, I can tell you, it couldn't have happened today. You may think you have more freedom, but you also have more laws. That bear could not have happened today. He would not have been allowed. And in that moment, we would be silenced, all our bickering suddenly over. When father talked, even Frank and Franny could be sitting together close enough to touch each other, and they wouldn't fight. I could even be sitting close enough to Franny to feel her hair against my face or her leg against mine, and if Father was talking, I wouldn't think about Franny at all. Lily would sit deathly still, as only Lily could, on Frank's lap. Egg was usually too young to listen, much less understand, but he was a quiet baby. Even Franny could hold him on her lap and he'd be still. Whenever I held him on my lap, he fell asleep. He was a black bear, Father said. He weighed four hundred pounds and was a trifle surly. Ursus Americanus, Frank would murmur. And he was unpredictable. Yes, Father said, but good-natured enough most of the time. He was too old to be a bear anymore, Franny said religiously. That was the line father usually began with, the line he began with the first time I remember being told the story. He was too old to be a bear anymore. I was in my mother's lap for this version, and I remember how I felt fixed forever to this time and place. Mother's lap. Franny in father's lap beside me, Frank erect and by himself, sitting cross-legged on the shabby oriental with our first family dog, Sorrow, who would one day be put to sleep for his terrible farting. 